I'm Eric Kresel with Craft Art Wood Countertops. We manufacture the wood tops that you'll be template and installing. Templating for wood tops is the exact same as you would template for a solid surface granite or other type of countertop material. There's not much that you need to change as far as a templating process. There are a couple of things that you do need to keep in mind, however, when you are templating for wood. Wood is a natural material like granite. However, with granite, granite is a solid surface. It's a solid piece of rock. That solid surface doesn't move the wood that you're getting is still alive so it does breathe it does expand and contract these are things that you do need to keep in mind when you are doing a template if you are templating between two walls and your grain direction runs perpendicular with those walls you can template tight to the wall scribing walls as needed with craft art products we can cut a scribe in a wall because of the expansion and contraction in wood it's going to expand and contract with the grain front to back you can scribe to the back wall, but with installation of our tops, it allows for that expansion and contraction in plank or edge grain style tops. There's a difference in end grain. End grain is the end of the board, so you're gonna have expansion and contraction in all ways. If you do have an end grain situation between two walls, you do need to allow for expansion and contraction between those walls, typically an eighth inch total. That's a sixteenth of an inch on one side, sixteenth of an inch on the other side. With the changes in climates, as well as the allowance for expansion contraction in end grain tops, it allows for the expansion and contraction between walls so that you do not pop your drywall tape seams. A very high percentage of craft art wood tops are island pieces. In an island application, when you're templating, you really do need to think about overhangs. An unsupported overhang 10 to 12 inches is not a problem. Anything over that needs to be supported by corbels, by turn legs, or by metal underrouting into our top. We will do that at our location. However, it does need to be noted on your template in order for us to help you have a supported top. The good thing about wood is that when you have a wall that's out of square or has a bow in it, we can cut a bow into that wood top. If you do a template to scribe to that back wall, we will cut it. As you can see in this application, the wall is pretty much out of square in the back edge, as well as along the um, back of the cabinets. So what we'll do is we will make a straight line on that template against the back wall, bringing the back wall into square so that we can cut a scribe into the back of the wood top. So to sum up, there's not much that you need to change from your current template application to a wood top application. The things that you do need to remember are expansion and contraction in wood. If you're going between two walls, know the construction style. If it's an edge grain or a plank style, you can template tight to the walls. You can also scribe to the back wall. If it's an end grain top, you do need to allow for expansion and contraction between walls. In an island application, Template the top as is, but always note your unsupported overhangs. Installation of craft art wood tops is very different than installation of granite. Granite, as said before, is a piece of rock. Not a lot of movement, so you put it down in silicone, silicone dries, it's done. Wood tops do move, so the application used for installations is very different you do need to screw and attach the wood top to the cabinet bases. To do this, you do need to drill a larger hole in some sort of support in the cabinet itself. You will notice a 3 8 of an inch hole is larger than a screw. This is where your fender washers come into play. Fender washers provide two different functions. The first, they span the 3 8 hole. The second, they disperse the pressure between the wood and the screw itself. This allows for expansion and contraction in our wood tops. The larger hole allows for the screw in the hole 
to move. In the changes in climates, the wood will expand and contract. With the larger hole, the screw will move in that hole. The fender washer will hold the pressure of the wood top down, but allow it to move back and forth as it's naturally going to do. With the price point that craft art wood countertops are sold at, you will run into a lot of applications where it's just the island piece. A lot of times, you have cabinets that have plastic corner blocks or no support at all. Craft Art sends out wood corner blocks with every shipment. It is necessary for you to screw down your wood top on every corner. It is also necessary for you to put screws in the field. There's really no rule of thumb as to how many screws you do need. It's just whatever you're comfortable with. Remember, do not over tighten your screws. If you do, you can snap those screws. As stated before, wood does move. You can have a top that comes to you with a slight bow or warp to that. Wood is flexible, so that warp can be pulled out with the proper installation. You do need to screw it down, but in a warp top, we do recommend that it is screwed down in a lug nut type pattern. Don't screw down one side totally because it will lift up the other side. Start one screw in every corner and work it around so that you pull out the bow easily. If you're doing an entire kitchen surround and you do have a joint in our top, all of our joints are dry joints. There is no glue, no silicone, nothing holding them together. All the joints are finished with the finish that we use. In a multi-piece application, the seams are T-bolts, very similar to a laminate countertop. The T-bolts will be underrouted into the countertop. This will pull the seam together. There are also biscuits in the seam. This allows for limited movement in the seam itself. In multiple pieces, you will need to level up the outside of the countertops. If you don't, you will create a gap at your seam. When working on a seam, do not use a hammer. Dead blow hammer or rubber mallet are perfectly fine. You don't want a gap in the seam. If you have a gap in the seam, this will allow for debris to collect. With multiple pieces that have a seam, you do need to put a screw in every corner. If it has a seam, you need to put a screw on either side of that seam all the way down. A lot of times, dealing with pieces with a seam, you will put them in place over a Lazy Susan. A lot of times a Lazy Susan has a full dust cover. What I mean by full dust cover is it's a full piece of plywood over the top of the cabinet. If this is the case, large breathing holes need to be drilled in the plywood. Craft Art wood countertops will come to you with the cutouts already in them. Sink cutouts, stove cutouts will be done at our shop if they're on your template. When installing a sink, you will need silicone. Use silicone on the rim of the sink in an undermount application. With granite, when you install a sink, you use epoxy. Epoxy cannot be used with wood. Epoxy does not bond to wood as well as a silicone does. However, silicone takes about a week, week and a half to dry with our product. In that case, use the spac screws that we talked about earlier and the fender washers to mount a stainless steel sink to our top. Use screws and washers as an application for installation of stainless steel undermount sinks. There's a different application to be used for cast iron sinks and farm sinks. Cast iron sinks, build a cradle, set the cast iron sink in that cradle, then put the top over that sink. Farm sinks are typically set in place before installation of the top. Put silicone on the rim of the farm sink, then set the top over that farm sink. Craft art tops can start at inch and a quarter and go up to six inches thick. If it's larger than inch and a half, the area around the sink and the faucet will be underrouted to inch and a half. As I said before, cutouts in craft art tops will be done at our shop. However, we suggest that faucet holes be done on site. To drill a faucet hole, we recommend you use a Forstner bit or a Mortison bit. Do not use a paddle bit or a hole saw bit. These can cause issues with your top later on. Whenever you drill a faucet hole or expose a raw edge on our wood top, that wood does need to be sealed. Craft Art sends a maintenance kit with every top shipped. In that maintenance kit, there is a can of finish. Use that finish to seal the faucet hole or the raw area. One coat is perfectly fine. The best way to install a wood backsplash is to screw it down to the wood top. However, you want to screw up through the wood top into the backsplash. This will pull it down to the top. It will also create it to be one piece. Wood top, 
and backsplash. When the top expands and contracts with the changes in climates, the backsplash will move with it. They will not interact and cause scratches in the finish. After the top and the backsplash have been installed, put a bead of silicone in between the transition of the wood top and the backsplash. Wipe off the excess silicone and clean up. These are just some of the basic guidelines for installation of Craft Art products. For more information, feel free to contact us at Craft Art.